Hey everyone, in this video we are going to learn about WebSockets and Django channels to build a real-time chat application. We will cover how WebSocket works, how Django channels manage them and walk through the code step by step so you can build a fully functional chat application. So let's start by understanding WebSockets and Django channels. So WebSockets are the way to create a two-way connection between a client like your browser or a server. Unlike a standard HTTP connection that sends a request and wait for a response, WebSockets lets the server send messages anytime without waiting for the clients to request data. This is crucial in chat apps, gaming, live notifications and other real-time features where data needs to be constantly updated. In Django, we use Django channels to handle WebSockets, allowing Django to support WebSocket connection and handle asynchronous events which is key feature for real-time application. So let's take an overview of the chat application we are going to build in this video. First, we need to create accounts. I'm going to create two accounts so that we can make conversation between them. So I have opened the chat application in two windows. On one side, user NashGen is logged in and on the other side, user Jack is logged in. So when NashGen send a message to Jack, you can see here message instantly appears on the Jack screen in a real time and you don't need to refresh the page so this is because of WebSocket connection which allow the server to send response without waiting for a new request from the client. Now let's start building this in code. To get started, we need few packages. We will install Daffin and Channels which are essential for setting up WebSocket support in Django. Daffin will act as a ESJ server while Channels will help manage WebSocket connection and real-time data transfer. So let's install them and now we need to configure ASGI because WebSocket requires asynchronous communication. Here ASGI enables Django to handle both HTTP and WebSocket protocol letting us manage both synchronous and asynchronous requests in our app. So in this file we are setting the default setting module for the Django project and initializing the protocol type router. This allows the ASGI application to support multiple protocols such as HTTP and WebSockets. Now, in your project setting, you need to add Daffin and Channels in your installed app and you need to add ASGI application. This setting points to the ASGI file in the chat app project and connects it as an entry point for ASGI. And also you need to configure channel layers. So here we are using in-memory channel layer. Now you are all done with the WebSocket configuration on the server side. Since you have made changes in your installed app, so make sure to run migrate command and then run your server. So when you run your server, you should see AJ Daffin development server running at this port. And now our server is ready to handle both HTTP and WebSocket traffic. So in this project, we have two apps. One is user app that include all the user authentication functionalities. And second one is a chat app where we will implement all the functionalities related to messages. In the chat app, we create a message model that will store the chat messages between users. Each messages include detail about the sender, receiver, content and timestamp. So sender and receivers are the foreign key to Django users that represent the sender and receivers of each messages. So in the content, we have the actual text of the message and this timestamp automatically saves the time when the message is created. So after creating this model, make sure to run the migration and migrate command so the changes will be reflected to the database. So here we have defined the URL pattern for accessing the chat room view. So this is the dynamic URL that captures room name which represents the other user's username in the chat. So in the views.py, we load the messages between users and search messages by content. First, we retrieve all the user excluding the logged in user and then we retrieve the chat messages between logged in user and the another user and if there is a search query we filter messages containing that text so in the user last message we append the user and the last message of that user and finally we render chat.html with all the necessary context in the chat.html we have the sidebar where we loop over the user to display the last message with each users and then here we have the chat section where we loop over the messages in the chat between logged in user and the other user in the chat room and here we have the chat form that contains the input for new messages which will be sent using javascript so here we have the javascript code for handling the websocket communication so here this creates a new WebSocket connection to the server and this is the URL where the WebSocket server is listening. WS is the protocol for unencrypted WebSocket connection and this will dynamically retrieve the current server's host name. WS chat and room name are the specific to the WebSocket routing path. So basically chat socket is not the WebSocket connection object that can send and receive real-time messages. Chat socket dot on message event is triggered whenever the WebSocket server send a message to the client. This line selects the chat log element and appends a new message to its HTML that will display the sender's username and the message content. So, and here, if we submit the form and sends the message over the WebSocket, 
and clears the input field for the next message. So you don't need to worry about this HTML design because you will get all the source code in the description. And now if we run the server, uh, you can see here we have the sidebar where we get all the users list. And here is the chat section where we can send the messages. So if we send the message, nothing is happening here. You can check the console. You can see here that uh, WebSocket connection is failed because we need to handle it on the server side. To set up the WebSocket communication, for the chat application, we need to configure routing and define the consumer. In your chat app, create a routing.py file. And here, you know, we have defined the URL pattern for WebSocket connection. The repath function uses the regular expression and captures the room name from the URL and passes it to the chat consumer. So make sure you have configured auth middleware stack in your asgi.py file. Uh, now let's set up the WebSocket consumer. So let's create a new file, consumer.py. And in this file, we have a class chat consumer in which we have defined the main logic to handle the real-time chat messages. Here we have the connect method that establishes the WebSocket connection and assign the unique room group name for each chat session between two users. So here, disconnect method removes the user from the group when they disconnect. So this receive method triggered when the message is received from the WebSocket client. Uh, so this method first passes text data, that is the JSON object containing the chat message and it retrieves the sender that is the current logged in user and uses the get receiver user function which return the receiver that is the user specified in the room name and then the save message function saves the message content sender and receiver to the database to maintain the record of the conversation and this chat message method receives the message sent to the group and then it prepares the json response with the sender receiver and the message content and then send this to the websocket client in the group and this is how the message get replayed in the real time to all users in the chat session now let's save all the changes and test this chat application so i'll be using nextgen in one window and jack in another window if i send a message from nextgen to jack as soon as i hit the send button message appears instantly in jack's chat window without needing to refresh the page so if you found this tutorial useful like the video and if you want more content like this, hit the subscribe button.